How's it going, everyone? Welcome to The Edge Show. My name is Nate. I'm the owner of Colorado Custom Leather and Blades. And if you appreciate good quality steel knives, if you use knives on the daily, if you live by the blade, and if you, like me, make blades, this is the show for you. We talk all things knives, edges, different steels, all that fun stuff when it comes to good quality knives. So, um, not a lot of interaction, and I know that because of starting a new show and trying to improve my track record here of doing things. Um, but um, So I, I would like to get to where people can choose a subject for the week or if they have questions about knives or steels or whatever. Uh, like I always give the example why I don't like stainless steel. I prefer high carbon steel. There's risks and rewards to both of them. Um, but there's, there's certain risks that I won't take when it comes to like a bushcraft knife or, or something of that nature, chef knife or whatever, and why I choose high carbon. But that, that's just an example. You can ask, okay, why is that? But this week we're going to talk about what is real bladesmithing? Uh, I think this is misconceived, uh, by television, um, by, I mean, as much as I love Forge and Fire, sometimes I think people get the wrong idea, uh, from that show. Um, I mean, and a lot of people have started bladesmithing and knife making, mostly just knife making based on Forge and Fire. And, you know, awesome. Good for, good for them. Uh, if they truly have a passion in it, it most likely has expanded into more. Um, but it does a disjustice, I think, because it's, people forget that it's a competition, right? So bladesmithing is actually within a scope of blacksmithing. Essentially, we are blacksmiths because back in the day... This is what I'm, what I'm teaching here is what does it mean to be a bladesmith? We have fallen the scope of a blacksmith. Because back in the day, a blacksmith didn't just do, uh, you know, um, decorative stuff and door handles and locks and, I mean, everything. And blades. They did everything. They did farrier work. Like today, when I go and get my steels from... Um, from Olio Acres, which is a farrier supply store, but they also appreciate the knife making community. Um, they they always say that hey, you know, you blades, your blacksmiths or bladesmiths, mostly just they just say blacksmiths really help out, you know, with expanding us and so on and so forth. And but the truth is that a bladesmith falls in the category of a blacksmith. Now, where does the name derive from? Black is because we work in the dark and we this is a dirty job. Um, I miss my coal forge. I, I have a propane forge, but still. Uh, I, ha I put in my wedding vows to my wife that uh, before I was done with the day, I would wash my hands and my arms because it would be covered in black. Sometimes even my face. When I had my coal forge, I would purposely, after gathering my coal pile, getting ready to start it, I would just take my fingers and I would just make a primitive coal paint face uh, before I started fishing, or er, fishing, forging. Um, yeah, but I mean, and that that's where... The black part comes from um, and then smith means to smite and to hit and that's important to understand because i think a lot of people misconceive the difference between stock removal and foraging and some of them are using a forge and an anvil but they are essentially doing stock removal and i used to be one of these people too until i learned more and more what it actually means to forge a blade to finish what Jason Knight teaches, uh, which is 100% on the anvil. Right now, I'm consistent at doing about sometimes it depends on the knife. Like the ones I'm going to show you an example, I would call that 87% just because of the type of grinds I'm about to do and setting myself up for that so I don't have the issues that I've been having on these three other knives this week, remaking now on the fourth. Um, but I'll get to that in a second. But the most valuable tools for a bladesmith are three things, in my opinion. The mind and knowledge are the first two. Uh, the mind and knowledge go hand in hand, okay? Anvil and hammers, okay? The, the anvil, because that is how you shape the steel. But more so, the anvil and the hammer coincide and coexist together because a hammer is how and where to hit and how hard in different parts of the anvil is going to translate the energy to the steel. Um, for example, and I'm going to be uh, getting into this here in a second, is this is a, this is a piece of 1095 steel, okay, uh, as a quarter inch. And uh, I'm doing a lot of chef knives and kitchen work out of that right now. Um, so it may not look like much, but that is, that is forged from uh, about, 
uh, 12-inch piece, and we're almost at 15, I think, now, something like that. So you can, and I mean, you can see the thickness of the spine versus the edge, right? You can see that taper. You can see the bevel. That was all done on the anvil. The finger choils are done on the anvil. Um, and that's what I mean by where to hit, how to hit in different parts of the anvil. And that goes to what I would consider this is probably about 87% done on the anvil uh, as far as the forge to finish percentage because uh, I've recently without watching videos, taking classes, whatever, a lot of how I've learned to to bladesmith has been by trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. Got something right, then trial and error. Got something right, got something right, learned something new, trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, got it right, and it just goes on from there. So this is going to be a flat grind um, chef knife, okay? And uh, so I uh, these are two failed ones for... A customer uh, on heat treat because I went too thin so in order to counter that I'm gonna have to do all my fancy grinding and profiling after heat treat or miss more so the the grinding putting the, the locking the flat grinds in because I did forge those bevels in and that's that's a big part too when you're forging a blade let me get to my notes here when you're forging steel that means two th that means many things blade geometry so this is blade geometry. Um, this is this is this finger choil, and all this is done on the anvil. You can't really see a huge difference from this being done on the grinder to this being done on the anvil. Uh, and I mean, here you can see grind lines because I highlighted that. Here you do not. That is all done on the anvil. You can also see because my heel right here needs to be uh, filed in just a little bit. Um, and that's okay. Again, I'm doing less work. What that means is I'm doing less work on the grinder, more work on the anvil. The anvil is my friend. The anvil is my home. That is where a bladesmith, blacksmith lives, is between fire and anvil. A hammer always swinging, making quality product. Okay. Um, so the shape, and most importantly, the, the bevels is all done on the anvil. Okay. This is all done on the anvil. But the, geom but the bevels is the most important, and here's why. Um, I, I got this and learned this from uh, That Works from Isla on YouTube. Uh, so their channel is on YouTube, uh, That Works, and I believe his name is Isla. And he teaches why you should uh, forge the bevels for one and two. A lot of people pinch steel versus actually forging the bevels in, and there is a huge difference. And it also translates to stock removal knives and why the hardness um why the testing for the um not the hardness but the uh, the edge retention ratio is so low and i will sh i want to instruct you to why i'm going to draw it on steel but i want to show it on paper first okay so uh we have these grain structures that's what they mean and this is a point this is basically a v grind so this is a stock removal or a pinch steel and this is forged bevels down here now i'm going to show you here on this piece of steel i have two Two ends, okay? I'm gonna do this really quickly. So I'm gonna draw in a stock removal or um, pinching the steel on the anvil and you're leaving it nice and thick and stuff like that because a lot of people will forge a shape and it's a huge block of steel like I used to do and then they do still about four, three hours on the grinder versus some knives like my my my, um, my small knife I just showed you called the, the um, pebble maybe 20 minutes on the grinder if that if that um but okay so going back to what i was saying so these are the grain structures in the steel okay now if you just pinch the steel and you're not actually forging in bevels those grain structures still run that direction if you're doing stock removal it's the same thing all you're doing is you're making a shape and you're not essentially taking the grain structure that makes the quality edge that you want and the quality steel that you want. It goes to the same principle of folding steel, pattern steel, known as Damascus. You have to have the molecules of the steel, steel work together and that's why with Damascus there's different steels usually. Uh, whereas back in the day iron ore was basically the original of Damascus because it was multiple ingots just kind of forge welded together into what finally became quality steel so 
um, without going too scientific. Now, this is what happens when you actually forge the bevels in and shape everything on the anvil. Those grain structures get tighter, which gives you better edge retention because now the grain structures are going to a point, okay? And that is important for a bladesmith to understand. And also, it will help you shape the blade and it reduces grinder time. But most importantly, that's what gives you quality edge on steel. Um, so, in the closing of this, a bladesmith... You're doing all of the work. You're not sending your steel out to be heat treated by somebody else. You're, you're doing your profiling. You're doing your bevel work on the anvil. Not a lot of time on the grinder. And the truth is, you, you, <laughs> you're a craftsman. Okay, from the first heat, that steel goes in to the sheath and sharpening. You're doing all of that work. That is why I take so much pride in it, and that is why my blades are at a fair price because it is quality steel that could be passed on to generations, and that's the way a blade should be. It is a tool, and every blade has a different job. There's not just one blade for every job. Okay, A bladesmith is a craftsman that's constantly learning. Like For example, I started doing leather work years ago. These are one of the sheaths I'm doing. I'm also doing hybrid work now with the TAC-2 gun, giving more of a three-dimensional and cooler effect to my more stylish like sax knives and stuff. So, I mean, that would be the sheath that I'm finishing. That's a crow skull that looks three-dimensional because I did tooling and I've learned how to tool leather and now tac and learning how to tac -two. So a bladesmith is a craftsman. It's a creative mind that can make a quality product, either functionable or beautiful. So anyways, guys, enjoy. God bless. Keep your edge sharp. We'll see you next week.